Acute asthma can be very difficult to treat during the coronavirus epidemic. I'm Prof. Mike Levine, a board member of the World Allergy Organization, and I'm going to discuss an algorithm for treatment of asthma attacks that recommends bronchodilators be given by a muted dose inhaler and spacer rather than nebulizers for all but the most severe life-threatening attacks that was published earlier this year in the World Allergy Organization Journal. So aerosol generating procedures are high risk for transmission of coronavirus. The highest risk procedures include intubation, non-invasive ventilation, tracheotomy, and manual ventilation before intubation. These spread large droplets, whereas nebulized therapy produces small droplets that spread further in the air, last longer airborne, and fall out onto surfaces further away. Now, although nebulizers are most often used in emergency rooms, there has been a strong move towards giving bronchodilators via meter dose inhaler and spacer in recent times. Whereas nebulizers commonly use either two and a half or five milligrams of salbutamol or albuterol, and meter dose inhalers typically deliver 200 micrograms per puff, this makes multi dosing of up to 10 puffs of short acting beta 2 agonists to be an ideal replacement therapy for a nebulizer. Many studies show that nebulizers given by a meter dose inhaler with spacer, even a low cost homemade bottle spacer shown here, are as good or even more efficient than bronchodilators given by nebulizers, as long as they're given in an equivalent dose range. So many expert consensus guidelines, including GINA, the Global Initiative for Asthma, recommend replacing nebulized therapy with metered dose inhalers, but no specific protocols have been published to guide us until now in implementing this recommendation without potentially adversely affecting patient outcomes. Here are the most important features of the guideline. First of all, the tools for assessing severity allow categorization into mild, severe, and the most severe form of, of asthma, which is life-threatening asthma, which then allows us to discriminate between the treatment of these different categories. For mild to moderate asthma, the flowchart provides practical guidelines in how to treat with multi-dosing, how to assess the response to therapy with both the dose, uh, uh, doses given there, as well as some tips about the administration. The severe asthma algorithm includes those with both life-threatening asthma, as well as non-life-threatening asthma, but still severe, and includes a short list of explanatory notes. And you can see here on the right and on the left of the screen, are the two different choices for inhaled therapy, which I'll discuss shortly. And then in the middle at the heart of the protocol is the steps to be taken for all patients in order to make sure that this is done as safely as possible for your patient. So in terms of this selection of inhaled therapy, the severe asthma algorithm recommends restricting nebulizers to only those with life-threatening exacerbations. And if necessary, performing nebulization in a negative pressure room and with a provider wearing full personal protective equipment. For other exacerbations, whether they're mild to moderate or severe without immediate life-threatening signs or symptoms, we recommend using metered dose inhaler with the spacer using the multi-dosing technique. The algorithm advocates frequent monitoring of severely affected patients and flexibility in moving between these bronchodilators given by meter dose inhaler and spacer or bronchodilator given by a nebulizer as the patient either improves or deteriorates. At the middle of the algorithm is these caveats and important points. First of all, everybody needs continuous oxygen, uh, monitoring, uh, assessment, choosing the inhaled therapy and proceeding immediately to the next step. To reduce the likelihood of progression in severely affected patients in whom we choose to use meter dose inhaler and spacer, as well as potentially shorten the duration of nebulizer and therapy in patients with life-threatening symptoms, we recommend treating them with systemic bronchodilator agents at the same time as inhaled bronchodilator therapy. So using intravenous magnesium sulfate as a bronchodilator in addition to that immediate corticosteroid therapy 
in order to reduce the long-standing inflammation. Magnesium sulfate has a very favorable safety and efficacy profile in comparison to other systemic agents such as intravenous salbutamol, oil butyrol, and aminophilin. It is in pretty much all of the acute asthma guidelines, and this recommendation is simply to increase its priority in order to make sure that inhaled therapy is required for as little as possible and that systemic therapy makes sure that uh, asthma does not progress. It's really important when we give aerosols, whether it's a meter dose inhaler and spacer or whether it's a nebulizer, that we pay attention to the best possible technique to allow optimal lung deposition. With regards to meter dose inhaler with spacers, each puff has to be administered individually via the spacer prior to actuating the next puff. Where possible, patients should exhale fully before actuating the inhaler and then breathe in slowly and deeply to full inhalation. Hold their breath for 10 seconds and then breathe out slowly through their nose. This is to make sure that there's no dead space in the lung that is preventing the, the medication with the uh, bronchodilator in it, with the air, uh, from accessing the lungs to the most deepermost portion where they can work uh, optimally. If it is not possible to pull in a single inhaled breath, deep and slow tidal breathing through a spacer is recommended, in which case a valved spacer may be preferable. Importantly, face masks do not help increase airway deposition if the person is able to put a mouthpiece in their, ma in, in their mouth like this uh, little kid is doing. So they should not be used except in very small infants who cannot breathe through their mouth alone and make a good seal with their lips around the spacer. So despite the limitations in the data, we believe that the suggested algorithm is based on scientific evidence and reflects best practice. In addition, we recommend that asthma during this time be kept really well under control to prevent exacerbations that may require emergency department visits. Current guidelines include using an additional dose of inhaled corticosteroid with every dose of bronchodilator. This can be done using two inhalers or with a single inhaler in those using combination inhaled steroid long-acting beta-2 agonist where the beta-2 agonist is formoterol, single maintenance and reliever therapy. The full guidelines and articles are available on our website at worldallergy.org.